When I was 12 years old, my 15 year old brother and I experienced a very horrific event while at our grandparents cabin. My grandparents own a cabin on a rather large island in southern Sweden, which contains only two cabins, separated by slightly less than a mile. One summer, my brother and I, along with my mother and sister, went to visit them for a weekend. The thing we did most during our days there was go fishing. On the first day of our stay, we were planning to fish. We set everything up. All we had to do now was go dig for worms, which we used for bait. Grabbing a shovel along with a bucket, we went back up to the cabin and down a short slope and through a trail where we usually find plenty of worms. The forest is very dense and barely any light shines through, which makes the whole setting a bit unnerving for me, as I have always been easily frightened. I hear something walking and I look at my brother with a very scared face. He brushes it off as if there was nothing to be afraid of, and insists that we go check it out. We walk a bit further down the trail, which I know leads to an open meadow, as I have been there looking for mushrooms with my mom at a previous occasion. Before we get to the open, my brother holds up his hands as to indicate for me to stop. I looked over his shoulder and see behind the trees what appears to be a moose looking directly at us. I got relieved as I knew they were friendly, and as I had seen plenty of moose nearby. My brother, however, who has never been scared of anything, looks back at me with the biggest eyes I've ever seen, and the most pale I've ever seen someone, as he tells me we should get out of here. Without questioning him, I start to walk back while he keeps pushing me as to make me move quicker, and as we reach the cabin we are pretty much running. My mom and grandma were sitting at the porch as we got into the front, and I tell them that we saw a moose. My brother, on the other hand, remains completely silent. Safe to say that there was no fishing that day. The following day, we didn't even bring up fishing. I'm sitting on the porch reading a magazine, and my brother is sitting inside on the couch doing the same, although he still has the scared look in his eyes. I spend the following hour or two reading several magazines until my grandpa asks me where the shovel is. I realize that we left it where we were looking for worms the previous day, and I tell him where it is. Just as he was about to go and get it, my mother tells me that my brother and I have to go get it, since we left it there. She also tells me that we should go dig up some worms, as she wants to go fishing later with us. I don't question it, but my brother seems unnerved by it. This made everything all the more unsettling for me, as my brother is not easily scared at all, pretty much the opposite of me. We put on our shoes and head to the back of the cabin and walk down the trail heading to where the shovel and bucket is. Once we are about 10 feet from where the shovel is, my brother stops and tells me I should go and dig, as he did it the last time. I do as he says and I start digging for worms. I have this very strong feeling that he stayed back because he was scared something would happen. I start hearing the bushes around me sway, and I hear sneaky footsteps moving closer and closer. Everything is all the more creepy as I have no idea where the footsteps are coming from. One second I'm sure they're coming from my right, the next it feels like they're coming from a completely opposite direction. I quickly put a few worms that I found in the bucket, and as I fumble to pick up the shovel, I feel as I'm being watched. My brother walks up to me and helps me seal the bucket, and I tell him it feels like someone is watching, to which he responds that we should leave. Just as we turn around and are ready to head back, I hear a crack from behind me and turn around. I look down the trail and see the moose once again, peeking at me from behind a tree. It looked very different from what they usually look like, as it felt much slimmer and sort of twisted. At the time, I am more confused and curious than I am scared, and my brother is dead silent. I can't quite see the whole body of it, but I know that something is wrong. I stand for a couple more seconds watching it, as it is staring right at us. From what I can see, I realize that it's not standing on its four legs. It is leaned forward, as an old man with really bad posture, with its arms hanging straight down. I also had a weird sensation that the creature was trying to talk to me, saying, Let me help you. In a few seconds, I get struck with panic and start walking really fast back to the cabin, my brother doing the same. It only takes a second before we are both in a full sprint running back to the cabin. I turn around and the moose-like creature is nowhere to be seen. We put the shovel by the shed where we took it and bring the bucket of worms to the front where my mom and grandparents are. The day goes on as if nothing had happened, and we don't speak of it at all. 
Since this happened, I never thought I'd bring it up with my brother. We both just sort of knew that it would feel wrong to speak about it, and none of us had visited my grandparents' cabin since. To this day, I'm not sure at all what I saw. I mentioned it to my friend once, and he told me if what I said was true, then it was probably a wendigo or a skinwalker. He showed me some pictures from Google, and I instantly found resemblances of the creature that I saw back then. Until recently, I had completely repressed this event, but after reading several stories about Wendigo and Skinwalkers, my mind has once again become haunted by this event. And in a terrible way, I realized that what I most likely saw was something far more horrific than a moose. Out of all the things I've read about Wendigo, the most terrifying thing is that people say never to talk to it. I'm just imagining in my head what could have happened if I tried talking back to the creature when I felt it was speaking to me. Part 2 Alright, so some people asked me to share more regarding the events that happened when I was visiting my grandparents' cabin. I have not been there since, but my grandmother and her new husband stay there every summer. Note that this is about six years ago since the moose incident. Through the magic of Facebook, I contacted my grandma. We don't know each other all too well anymore, so I don't really feel comfortable calling her. I told her about the moose-like creature and how my brother and I both saw it. She proceeded by typing for nearly 15 minutes, and I waited patiently. Her reply was a full story of her own encounter with what she said she had hoped to be just a dysfunctional moose. Her writing was in Swedish, so I will do my best to translate it. About 20 years ago, I was staying in the cabin by myself. Your grandpa was working at the time, so I was alone for the whole week. One night, while I was sleeping, I woke up with an uneasy feeling. I wasn't sure why, but I just knew something was wrong. I felt as if I was being watched. My first thought was to fall back asleep, and so I did. I woke up in what I believe was about an hour, and this time I was sure something wasn't as it should be. I felt the same feeling of being watched, and I could clearly hear something moving outside. I grab my bedside candle and light it. As I get out of bed, I choose to not pull the curtains as I have a terrifying feeling that someone will be staring right at me. By now, I am convinced that something is trying to rob me. I was sleeping in the room at the back of the cabin, and so I walked up to the front and looked out by the porch, but see nothing. There are no neighbors nearby, and I can't call the police as I don't have a phone. I decide to go back to bed and try to sleep the fear away. I lay there for at least an hour without falling asleep. And although the sound is gone, the unpleasant feeling has stuck around. At the back side of the cabin, right outside my window, was an older cabin, which was used before this one was built. The place was creepy, and we eventually decided to burn it down some years later. Anyways, I hear something bumping around side of it, and I realize that I'm gonna have to look out the window. I get out of bed, light the candle again, and pull the curtains. The uneasy feeling is still there and I have the strongest feeling that something is going to stare right back at me. I pull the curtains and for a complete second I am caught in complete terror. I see something staring right back at me, but it's no robber. It's not a person. It's a moose. I expected to be relieved to find that it was nothing but a harmless animal, but that is far from what I was. After a few seconds I calmed down and the panic faded a bit. The thing was still staring at me but it was sure not a normal moose. I took a few seconds to investigate it. For a first, it was not standing on four legs. It was bent forward, as if in the upper front legs were just barely floating above the ground. It was also much slimmer than moose usually are, and it had this sort of disturbing twist in the body. The antlers looked flat out terrifying. Naturally, it doesn't say anything, but I had this strong feeling that it wanted me to come out. It wanted me to let it help me, Although I felt that's what it wanted me to hear, I just knew the thing had bad intentions. I faint within a few seconds, and I wake up in the morning and let out a scream of panic. The creature is gone, and I am contemplating whether or not I was dreaming. To this day, I was unsure if this actually happened, or if I was just dreaming. Now that I know you saw the same thing, I know it was real. My grandma suggested that I tell my brother that I spoke to her about it and I am seriously considering doing so. I mean, this for sure confirms that what we saw was not a normal moose. I had some thoughts, thinking it might have just been a handicapped or dysfunctional moose. 
But by the way, my grandma said it tried to communicate with her and convince her. I knew it was the same thing that my brother and I encountered, as it too tried to talk to us. Apparently, she had already told this story to my mom and grandpa, but they just brushed it off and said it was either an injured moose or she was dreaming. Hearing about this story just made me all the more scared, but at the same time curious about what the creature actually was, and what was its purpose. Was he trying to lure us into the forest? Was he actually trying to help us with something? Hopefully I get some more clarification the more I talk to people about it. I ended up sending some pictures of Wendigo and Skinwalkers to her, and she definitely saw resemblances between them. That all sent shivers down my spine. To all of the people reading this, if you ever encounter a weird looking creature with antlers, do not speak with it, or even acknowledge their presence. That's what they want. So this is a story about an experience I had late last year. I was in Dorset, UK, the night before Christmas Eve. Opinions are welcome as I can't really explain it, and everyone I tell the story to thinks I'm just crazy or I'm making it up. What makes me think this may not be a skinwalker is that I've always heard that they won't enter a person's home unless you specifically invite them in, unless it took the open window as an invitation. In addition, I have nothing which to explain the orb and flashes unless I'm really losing my mind. Either way, I don't claim to have any literary ability. I also didn't know anything about skinwalkers until I tried to figure out what this thing was. I'll just tell it like I experienced it. I was staying with my parents for a while in my old bedroom. We had picked up the house cheaply just three years prior when its former elderly owner suddenly passed away in one of the bedrooms. A friend and I had been hanging out for a week or so, enjoying the holiday, playing video games, going for short walks with my sister's dog on the nearby beach surrounding the fields. On the 22nd of December, this friend left to go spend Christmas with his own family, and not knowing what to do with my newfound bedroom for the evening, I decided to go to sleep early, around 9pm for a change. My bedroom is on the second floor, and my window was left open a few inches to let in a cool breeze. My sleep was restless. I kept waking and re-entering sleep every half hour until around midnight when I finally drift off for good, or so I thought. Now I don't often have dreams, and if I do I don't remember much of them, but the dream that I had this night was stranger than the others, and it is relevant to the rest of the story. I was seeing through the eyes of another person as they emerged from a bush in one of my neighbor's gardens. They were steadily and silently approaching my own garden climbing over a six-foot wooden fence as easily as you or I climb a set of stairs. I couldn't see any hands or feet. It was as if it was a steady cam, just gliding over the ground. My sister's dog was asleep on the tiny patch of grass near the tree, and I came to a stop directly beneath my open window. The viewpoint then switched to resting on a branch near the top of the tree in my garden, watching the back of a pale white humanoid figure silently glide up the side of my house and looking at me through my open window. This is where I woke up, covered in a cold sweat and decided that I should just lay there for a while with my eyes closed. All I could hear was the wind in the trees outside, as I thought about the dream, hoping to remember some more of it. Without warning, the silence was broken by my sister's dog barking like crazy. About 10 seconds later, it turned to yelping before fading into silence once more. Thinking it was squirrels or something else spooking the dog, I planned to go back to sleep. But then I start to hear slow scratching sounds on the wooden paneling on the outside of the house. It only covers the second floor, so I reason that it couldn't have been my sister's dog. So I sat up, intending to take a look outside, pausing momentarily to glance sideways at the radio clock illuminating the room with its yellow-orange glow, and of course, it's 3.33 AM, exactly. This is when the unexplainable intense fear washes over me, stronger than I have ever felt before or since. It definitely felt like something was in the room with me, like I was somehow intruding or being watched. I thought I could hear a low murmuring coming from all around me. I saw something move across the ceiling and come to rest behind the room's main light shade. I closed my eyes and laid down again for reasons I can't explain even now, as if I was being willed by an outside force. Then, with my eyes still closed, a floating white orb appeared roughly where I had seen the shadow on the ceiling, accompanied by the sound of a thousand lighters being sparked at once. It was almost deafening. 
There was a bright white flash that filled the room with light that I could clearly see with my eyes still closed. As the flash subsided, I was left in total darkness again. I immediately sat upright, wondering what just happened. Slowly, I reached for the bedside light with my right arm, and it wouldn't turn on. Memories of unplugging it so my friend could recharge his laptop at some point earlier in the week came flooding back to me. It was only then when I was made fully aware of the dark humanoid figure now standing completely motionless in the center of my room, beneath the main light, as it unnaturally snapped its head to the left to watch my arm reaching for the light. It slowly turned its head back onto me, and I couldn't make out any facial features. It was as if its skin absorbed all light like a black hole. I stayed there for a good two minutes, just paralyzed in fear, not really comprehending what it was I was looking at. Then it abruptly, in a very jerking, unnatural movements, took a single step towards me and extended its open hand, ending in long, almost talon-like fingers. As it came even closer, I felt fear increase proportionally to its distance from me. It was almost touching my face when fight or flight mode engaged without even thinking, I jumped out of bed and slammed on the wall to turn on the main light switch. My head flicked back to cast a fresh eye on the thing, where inside of a fraction of a second, it crossed the room and threw itself out the open window, clearing the garden in a single jump before disappearing into the night at an impossible speed. I went downstairs to check on the rest of the house, and to make sure my parents were okay. Into the garden, I found my sister's dog whining softly, and attempting to hide behind the tree, shaking. I can't stop thinking back to that experience and wondering what would have happened if I stayed put, or even taken its hand. I've always been a bit of a skeptic, ever since I was a kid. Scary stories don't faze me, creepy games never frighten me, and whenever I hear something weird at night, I instantly assume it's something normal, an animal, or just the house settling. Despite this, something very unsettling happened to me the other day, and I'm not really sure what to make of it. I think it's the first time in years I've been genuinely frightened. I live in a forest area in the US. Me and my girlfriend live in a large cabin, and although there are no roads nearby, our nearest neighbors are at least a mile away. We also have two cats, one of which sleeps in the bedroom with us, while the other often goes out at night and does whatever cats do when they're out of sight. Anyway, I like to stay up late at night and sleep late into the morning, whereas my girlfriend's an early bird. It was one in the morning and I was watching a crappy TV in the living room while my girlfriend slept in the bedroom. I was beginning to grow tired when I heard something outside, near the cat door. For clarity, our cat door uses an electronic chip so only our cats can use it. I assumed it was just one of the cats coming in or leaving the house and I just ignored it. Then I heard it again. It sounded like something thudding against the cat door. It happened several times at random intervals, until I lost my patience and decided to go open the door. Clearly the cat was having trouble getting in. I never thought about it at the time, but it was weird because we feed our cats well, and they're very lean rather than chubby. I passed the bedroom and peered in as I walked past, to see if my girlfriend heard the noises. She was fast asleep, but the cat that sleeps with us was staring at the window. I call her name. Nothing. She keeps staring. I shrugged it off and kept heading towards the kitchen. The back doors are through there by the way. Anyway, so I reached the back door and saw a dark shape through the translucent door. I sighed, expecting the cat to be out there, and opened the door. It took me a moment to open the door and I saw the cat tense up as I opened it. The door opened fully. I froze. It wasn't my cat. Whatever it was had started moving before I opened it up. I only caught a glimpse of a distorted figure, kind of like a tailless dog, bolting, and I mean absolutely pelting it. I freaked out and slammed the door shut. What the hell was it? I wasn't sure. My natural skepticism kicked in, and I assumed it was just my other cat, and I had merely startled it. Perhaps the darkness made it appear larger. Nevertheless, I was creeped out, and I decided to go to sleep. As I slipped into bed, I realized something horrifying. The second cat was asleep on the rug. It took a while to get to sleep that night. Everything seemed normal until a few hours later. I awoke to a strange feeling of dread. Something wasn't right. My girlfriend was fast asleep. I held my breath and heard something creaking by the door. 
It sounded too loud to be one of the cats. It was as if a person was walking about. I reached toward my bedside cabinet and flicked on the lamp. The room was illuminated and I saw something just standing outside the door, staring at me. The same twisted figure I had spotted earlier outside. It wasn't very tall, maybe a little over five feet, but it was its face that scared me the most. I only caught a glimpse of it, but what I saw will stay with me forever. It looked like a dog, but with an elongated face and almost human-like eyes. You know that weird, distorted snarl dogs pull when they're pissed off? It had that expression. I instantly started yelling profanities as I scrabbled backwards, trying to straighten up. The creature turned and sprinted down the hall. I heard it dash outside and go past the window behind us, just above the headboard. I managed to look out as my girlfriend started to panic as she woke up fully. We both caught a glimpse of whatever the hell that thing was as it dashed off into the woods near our home. Grabbing my trusty shotgun from underneath the bed, as well as a couple rounds from the ammunition box that sits next to it, I ran out of the room in my underwear and rounded into the kitchen. The door was open. I'd forgotten to lock it when I saw the thing originally. I haven't seen it since, but we still live in our cabin but I've bought sturdy locks for all the main doors and windows in the house, and always check the exit points at night. I also go to bed a bit earlier than I used to, so I'm asleep when the freaks of the night start to wake up. I've read a bunch of forms, and the only thing that I can compare it to, based on what I saw, is a skinwalker. If you know anything about these things, please let me know. As I am writing you this, other skinwalkers are in front of my house. They are surrounding me. If I die, I want you to know what happened. I stand alone, nobody to help me. I hear them howling. By my estimation, there are at least five of them. But let's tell the story from the beginning, shall we? My childhood was nice. It was going smooth and buttery until my eighth birthday. After a long day and a party with my friends, Summer heat slowly disappeared as the night came on. I was out in the backyard playing with my Spider-Man figure. I was feeling safe and happy, until my dog shot across the yard and ran off into the forest. I should probably describe the dog. He was a big Siberian Husky, white. His name was Johnny. Anyways, back to the story. The dog shocked me. Then in a second, I went from feeling safe to feeling like I could die at any moment. Right then, fog rolled into my backyard. I could see the outline of a figure standing in it. Then, a wolf howled. It sounded like a wolf at first, but it sounded wrong. I screamed for my dad who came out running. I told him about Johnny and the wolf howling. He then said, Son, there's no wolves in this country. He ushered me inside and grabbed his shotgun and went searching for Johnny. He came back empty-handed, but I knew something happened that he saw something. I could see it in his eyes. That night, he stayed awake on the couch, gripping his shotgun until the sun came up. From that point on, every night the fog would roll in in our backyard and the figure would start howling. As I grew older, I could not be convinced by my father it was just a wolf. So on one winter evening, he sat me down in the couch by the fireplace and told me a story. Son. Long before men ruled the earth, other creatures lived on it. So naturally, when we came, they felt angry. They wanted to get rid of us. That thing you see every night howling is one of them. They are called skinwalkers. They are sort of shapeshifters. They can take the shape of a human or animal. Also, they take their memories, their voice, their life. But you can always recognize the skinwalker from the real deal. When they speak, there is something wrong in their voice, a certain amount of something sinister. My son, I have dealt with skinwalkers all my life. Looks like you'll have to do that too. He then gave me an unmarked red leather bound book and told me to read it in its entirety. And so I began. In it was everything about skinwalkers. How do they live and what they do? What do they feed on and how to hunt them? My father then moved away to the city when I was 20. He knew then I could guard the front line. Fast forward a few days ago, I was in the backyard of the same house. Me, now a fully grown male, 25 years old, I was guarding, and an idea came to my mind. I'm gonna catch that skinwalker. 
So I prepared my traps, some signs, and put my lucky necklace on my neck. I poured holy water everywhere, in the sprinklers too, put salt in my shotgun gauges, also in my sniper rifle rounds. Night came, and by my expectations, at around 10pm the fog came in. What was driving me to hunt this skinwalker was this. I can't have a family with this thing around us. Why you may ask, because this skinwalker didn't do anything to me. Wrong. He got my dog. My dad found it in the creek a few days later after he was hunting. He took a good friend of mine. I didn't want my kids to live a life like me. To be scared constantly. To not have a teenage life just because this thing came every night and attacked my house. So when the fog came, I got ready on my roof and waited. After only 10 minutes of waiting, it was here. He started doing his usual, howling and throwing stuff at my house, mostly animal carcasses. And then, out of nowhere, I turned the sprinklers on. It screamed so hard it was shaking my house. Then I shot at it with my silver bullet with some salt. It came down, but I knew it wasn't dead. It was just unconscious. I then came down from the roof. I didn't turn off the sprinklers. I picked the thing up. It must have weighed around 300 pounds. But I was a huge dude, 6 foot 8. I have trained for this my entire life. I was ready. I took it into my basement and strapped it into a chair, placed in a cage that had electricity running through its bars. I then waited for it to wake up. When it did, it started howling immediately. It changed from its wolf shape to one of my dead friends just to hurt me. I left it there to rot. But then, it started howling again. It called another. This brings me to this moment. It's still howling. They are surrounding me. I have ammo and food in my bunker. My house was built like a fortress, but the chance of survival is small. I will try to stop them, to save you. So if I die here, take my example. Be prepared for everything. Last night, I had an experience with what I believe to be a skinwalker. I was sleeping on my couch. I'm in the process of remodeling my bedroom. It had been storming on and off all night, but in that moment, the wind was only blowing. It was about one in the morning when I was woken up by a very strange noise. I can't describe it that well, but it sounded like an animal call, except as if a human was making the sound. It was a long, deep noise that kept on going, almost like a foghorn. It sounded like it was right outside my window, in my backyard. In case you're wondering, I live in a country near the Ozark Mountains, and directly on the Trail of Tears. I've lived out there, in the middle of the woods my whole life. I've heard and seen everything. Bears, deer, cougars, raccoons, coyotes. But the sound that I heard that night wasn't like anything that I've ever heard. I'm not going to lie, it scared the absolute hell out of me. I immediately went to my bedroom. I have a window that looks into my backyard as well. I wanted to see whatever it was, but I didn't want to pull back my living room curtains to come face to face with it. I couldn't see anything through my bedroom window, so I turned around and started walking back to the living room. Then something hit my window. It wasn't strong enough to break it, it just sounded like someone hit the palm of their hand on the glass. At that point, I went back to sleep and ignored the sound. Looking back on it, I should have recorded it, and I tried when the noise came back the next night, but every time I took out my phone, it stopped. Today, I built up enough courage to go into my backyard and to investigate. There were loose limbs everywhere. I had a bonfire a few weeks ago. The remaining ashes had been dug through. Not blown by the wind or damaged by the rain. No, it looked like something took their hands and dug a hole. I did some research, and I think it's a skinwalker. I'm no stranger to these things. I've heard lots of stories about them, and considering that I've seen several things walking through the woods through my lifetime, I'm starting to become really convinced. So this happened to me last September, and I'm writing about it now, only because I've read so many experiences people have had that I'm at a point where I'm more comfortable talking about what happened. My best friends live out by a country farmland in Michigan. The land is very old and probably traces back to the Native Americans. 
there is even a nearby road called Indian Trail. Well, it was around 1.30 a.m. and I was leaving their house. And to paint a visual of what their yard looks like, the driveway is in the shape of a U and they have many cars parked except for this one part near the front of the house where there is a giant evergreen tree nobody ever parks in front of and a light that hangs over to illuminate this area. Where my car was parked is the furthest to the left and I have to walk across the entire yard and past the tree in order to get to my car. Well, as I left that night, I reached about the center of the yard and suddenly felt my heart rate was skyrocketing. This happened out of nowhere and I started running to get to my car as fast as I could. As I got into my car, my front windows were foggy, and as I started the car, there was a small patch clearing up at the bottom of the windshield where I could see clearly, and that's when I saw the thing squatting by the evergreen tree and watching me. I have never had that feeling as though my body was burning at 300 degrees and my heart was in my throat throbbing. I looked through that small patch of my window, which was now growing larger, and the thing wasn't moving. It was still frozen in place and squatting. It was not human. And it was not animal either. My body went numb. All of this happened in a matter of 30 seconds and I backed out of the driveway and drove down the dirt road to get home, probably driving 70 miles an hour. I immediately repressed what happened to that point and I don't even remember how I got home. The next day comes around and I go over to their house again. And I was sitting in my friend's room and I told her that I saw something in her yard last night. And she freaked out at me because she said it could have been a robber or a dangerous person. And I told her no, it wasn't a person. I described it as the khaki man, because it looked like those saggy khaki tan pants, but only the entire body was that texture. The head was bald with ears folded into the scalp and pitch black beady eyes like round buttons. Well, her husband overheard me talking about this and he entered the room halfway into the story and waited for me to finish and told me that him, his dad and brother have all seen it at once and they called it Gollum, like the creature from the Lord of the Rings. I didn't know what it was and they showed me a figurine of it and it had similar resemblance to it. None of them ever seen it more than once. I told them that I didn't want to know anything more about it and I tried to erase that this ever happened because it literally flipped my entire perception of this world around. Anything is possible. And while I've had paranormal experiences growing up as a child, I wasn't too scared about things like that. But to come across a creature that is not something my brain could have ever comprehended at this point, I believe that all kinds of things are out there. But all this time has passed since and I'm still traumatized from it. I don't want to live in fear and I still visit my friends frequently. But ever since then, they always walk me out if I'm leaving late at night. After a couple months passed, I decided that I wanted to know what it was that I saw. And after diving deep into online forums of people's paranormal experiences, I came across a story mentioning the term skinwalker which I never heard before, so I decided to look it up and that's what sparked my interest on researching more. I have read tons of stories online about encounters others have had with skinwalkers, which led me to research more about Navajo Native American folklore and the one who walks on all fours. A part of me thinks that it could have certainly been that, but another part of me is not so sure because this thing almost looked alien and not so much like a coyote. Although we often hear coyotes in this area late at night. I described what this looked like to my friend who lives at the house and she illustrated a spot on picture of it. That I'll attach here. I would love to hear from any of you with possible insight related to the subject of skinwalkers. As well as if you've seen anything like this. I have had some nightmares from it. And have thought about possibly talking to a Native American shaman who owns a shop nearby. But I'm not sure how I could approach a topic like that because it's a topic they don't like to speak about. Which is why I wanted to share it here first. I told this story to some friends tonight after not thinking about it for a while and remembered how odd and creepy it really is. The man who told me about this terrifying experience in the Colorado wilderness is one of those distinct relatives that everyone has. They're your third cousin, twice removed, or something to that effect. 
I'm not positive exactly how we're related, but he's an incredible guy. I'll call him Greg. Greg is a decorated Green Barret with a silver star to his name that he earned by capturing the leader of an Afghan sniper's cell without incurring any casualties. Despite his status of a huge badass, and not as inconsiderable size, 6'3", 200 pounds, Greg is a teddy bear, just an extremely humble, kind person. I have a lot of experience in the outdoors and have lived in Colorado for most of my life and Greg and I had an extended conversation about our adventures in the woods at my grandmother's house for Thanksgiving. We were sitting on the couch wearing tacky holiday sweaters when a conversation turned to hunting. Greg mentioned offhand that he used to be an avid hunter, but had an experience that turned him off to it. He doesn't even like guns anymore, something I found surprising coming from an accomplished soldier. I pushed him to tell me what happened, and though he seemed uncomfortable with the idea, he finally did. I'm going to switch to first person now and try to write exactly what Greg told me. It was late October, which means elk season is up in the Indian Peaks wilderness, and I went up there to bag a few elk and just relax for a few days by myself. I parked the truck near a trailhead about 8 miles from where I would end up setting up camp and was looking forward to the nice weekend in the woods with some nice peace and quiet after packing all my gear and getting ready. The first morning, I was in my deer blend, about 20 feet up in a tree, with a cup of coffee and my rifle. The sun had just come up an hour or so ago. About 50 yards from my tree, the tree line ended and opened up into a big meadow where a lot of elk tended to roll through, and I could sight my rifle pretty well through the trees and could see most of the big grassy area. Maybe a couple hours had passed, which really isn't boring that deep in the woods. I just drank my coffee from my thermos and listened to the life around me, feeling the woods getting ready for winter. I couldn't believe my luck when I glanced over the meadow and saw a large group of elk had started grazing in the meadow. The silent animals plodded along, munching at the grass, oblivious to me watching. Among the group was one of the most beautiful elk I had ever seen. It was called a monarch, which means its antlers had eight points each, something really rare. I quietly clicked the safety off my rifle and sighted in on it. When you're hunting an animal like this, you want to put the bullet right where the skull meets the spine, in order to sever the spinal column and kill it instantly and painlessly. The focus when you get in the zone is incredible. I swear I could feel the firing pin punch forward and the bullet leave the barrel as I pulled the trigger. That beautiful elk went down silently, and all the others scattered for the tree line. I was ecstatic about the shot and the elk as I climbed down the tree and set off for the meadow. I had left my rifle up in the tree, something I regretted soon, and I had only a small knife on me to gut the animal and drag it back to camp. As I was making the short walk between my tree and the meadow, I noticed that the woods around me were completely silent. Some of this is normal after you fire a gun in the woods, but for it to drag on this long was unsettling. I thought nothing of it and continued the short walk through the dense pines. As I was about to clear the trees and step into the meadow, I noticed something odd. I could see the elk's body lying in the grass through the trees, but there was something else there. There was what looked like another elk, antlers and all. On the opposite side of the dead elk, from where I was coming to walk out of the tree line, almost looking as though it was gently nuzzling the other elk's dead body. This was weird. To see another elk treat a dead elk like this, they usually just scatter. But I continued to walk towards it, hollering an attempt to startle the other elk off. It snapped its head up and looked at me. Over the body of its fallen friend, the strange new elk eyed me with its unafraid glare. I say glare because it didn't feel like an animal looking at me anymore. Its glassy black eyes gave me the same caught red-handed feeling that you got when your parents catch you when you're doing something wrong. I felt suddenly uncomfortable out of place into the woods that I loved so much, and somehow hated and guilty. I no longer wanted the elk. I stopped dead in my tracks and watched this animal as it eyed me angrily. What it did next gives me nightmares to this day. It stood up, and it was not an elk. The thing that stood before me on the other side of the dead elk must have been lying on its stomach, 
and put its arms down and pushed up, putting its legs under it. It reared back, glaring at me all along with its evil, glass eyes. My breath caught in my throat. Most of its body was at least somewhat human, but terribly emaciated and elongated. It appeared to stand ten feet tall, not including the antlers atop of the elk head. It was bald everywhere but the neck up, and looked sickly pale pink. Its legs and knees bent backwards, like the back legs of an elk. This horrible, skinny, naked, unnatural thing just stood there, glaring at me with a hatred that was palpable. The woods around us were silent. It might have been seconds, minutes, or hours. I felt the disapproving parent feeling shift. I felt more like an ant under a shoe. I took a step back. My boots felt like ten pounds. My body felt numb. And the noise of my footsteps was ear-splitting. I took one more and then turned and ran. Running through those thick woods is tough, but I ran faster than I ever have in my life. I passed under my tree, with my $4,000 rifle still sitting in it without even slowing down. I ran all the way back to my camp, which must have been a mile before I stopped for a breath. It took me another minute to dare to look behind me. I was alone, but the woods around me were still silent and brooding. I wanted more than anything to pack up and go home, but I knew that I would not likely make it back to the car before nightfall, and I did not want to be exposed at night. I cooked an MRE in my tent and stayed there the rest of the day. When night fell, I wrapped myself in my sleeping bag and tried to sleep, but I couldn't stop myself from staring at every little noise. I kept thinking about the possible rational explanations for what I saw. Maybe there's a crazy guy out there who found an elk head and is wearing it around scaring people. But no explanation came up when I quailed the maddening fear that I felt. That horrible sense of being hated and guilty far from home and nothing explained why that thing was ten feet tall with inverted knees. As soon as the sun came up, I ran back to the blind and took it down, then ran back to camp with my rifle and bag, packed everything up, and hiked out. I've never fired a gun in the woods since, and I don't ever intend to again. I'm not a spiritual person, but if that wasn't something in the forest telling me to leave it alone, I don't know what is. I can take a hint. I don't think I'll ever know exactly what that creature was, but I know what I saw. Next time you're up in the woods alone, be quiet, be respectful, and don't kill anything you don't have to. I thought at first Greg's story was too far-fetched to be true, but as he told it, I saw how truly scared he was. This confident, soft-spoken military man was shuddering through his story hands shaking and face pale. I don't know what to make of it, but he said the area this occurred is one I'm quite familiar with, and it can be quite an eerie place. I have had a few experiences solo camping up there, but nothing on this scale. Sometimes, being alone in the woods can feel like anything but. It just might be that there's some force out there, some inhuman creature that guards the woods. Just in case, I take extra care to be respectful whenever I'm among nature. You never know what could be watching. I had just gotten off Interstate 40 and was driving on US 191 North through the Navajo Res in Arizona one night heading to New Mexico. I'm looking for a gas station, not a car on the secluded highway. It being too dark and I somehow took a wrong turn onto a dirt road. It was because of my lack of sleep. The sign read, Ganado. Still driving, trying to make sense of my direction. I ended up at this garbage dump site. I was completely lost and saw nothing. Just pitch black darkness with the only light of the moon and some wisps of clouds covering the small part of it. Miles of bushes, some small trees, and a cornfield. The dump site was a large area. Piles of garbage were stacked, debris scattered the road and bushes. Deciding that I needed to figure out where I was, I stopped my car and put it in park. My AC was on and the smell of decaying fish hit my nose like a baseball bat to the face. Gagging, I turned off the AC, ready to look at my phone for Google Maps. The smell was foul, but I needed to get on the right track. My headlights had illuminated the area so I could see most of the piles. Then, I noticed something was moving just near the pile. 
There was a small coyote digging through the trash. I could see it clearly with my bright headlights. But the weird thing was, I realized it wasn't a small coyote. It looked like a small build figure of a kid. The kid stood up quickly looking at me. I could clearly see his face and what he wore. Swearing out loud, I could see that he was covered in black paint with a fur pelt wrapped around him that looked like it had been recently skinned. I noticed that it was the pelt of a small coyote. For a few seconds, everything registered in my brain. There in front of me stood a little boy, about 12 years old, covered in black paint and wrapped in a small coyote pelt, digging through the trash looking for something. And now he had stopped what he was doing, standing there, looking at me. I let out a yelp and the boy looked to my left. And as my head turned, nearly causing myself whiplash, there stood another, much larger figure in the brush. There stood a tall, heavy-built man covered from head to toe in paint. The parent. Also wearing a larger thin pelt of a coyote, he stood there staring at me, his face covered in red and black face paint. Shoulder-length messy black hair hung limply down by his shoulders. He wore a huge quantity of turquoise necklaces, a silver concho belt around his waist, and silver bracelets that shined from both my headlights and the moon. It looked like it was teaching the little boy, his son, something at night. I could see his face from a distance, a stern, mean face. His eyes weren't normal. They were black, soulless, and beady looking. It was as if they were looking into my soul. Then he smiled from ear to ear. I saw his sharp teeth. What the hell? Again, I screamed bloody murder as he ran at my car. My foot above the gas, I made the decision not to try to run them over for fear of having my window busted and being dragged out into the bush. Screaming, my heartbeat hammering against my chest and trying not to have a heart attack, still gagging at the smell that worsened. I put the car in reverse, stepping on the gas, nearly running off the road as he ran towards me. As I was making a U-turn, I heard the sound of what I know were his nails scratching the back of my car. I put the car in drive, my throat hurt from screaming, but that was all I could do as I looked into my rearview mirrors to see him sprinting down the road catching up to me. 54 miles an hour on the dirt road, then onto the highway, another 70 to 80 miles per hour, hoping I wouldn't crash. Driving like a madman, fully awake, my thoughts were racing, trying to make sense of what I saw. I made it back onto Interstate 40 and kept driving, too afraid to stop, making it to New Mexico in record time. I kept my story to myself because of the backlash my friends and family would probably give me. So, this is a true cautionary tale to those late night travelers. You may or may not see anything during the dead hours on secluded reservation roads. Just be careful what roads you take. Never having lived by myself before, I was pretty scared about what to expect. I graduated college and had landed a pretty decent job with a generous starting salary. But the downside was that I had to move far away from where I was currently living with my parents. It's been about three and a half weeks since I moved out and I've been getting along pretty well by myself. Even in college, I had a roommate and was only 30 minutes away from my parents' house. Now, I'm living alone two states away from my family. So I think that I took the sudden change pretty well. I don't know if it's because of the recent stress about moving and everything but I've been having the same reoccurring nightmare for the past couple of weeks. I'll wake up in the middle of the night covered in sweat, heart pounding, not remembering why I'm so scared, only to have the details of my dream come flooding back to me. Most of the time, I don't even go back to sleep because I'm so scared that I'll dream it again. I don't want to tell my parents about this because they're stressed enough as it is, with me living alone and so far away for the first time in my life. But it's starting to eat me alive. I've gotten very little sleep and it's beginning to show at my new job. I would say that one of the creepiest parts of my reoccurring nightmare is that I keep having these out-of-body experiences while I'm dreaming. I don't know how common out-of-body experiences are, but I think that having one every night for two weeks in a row is pretty rare. To understand the rest of my dream, you have to know the general layout of my apartment building and the room where I live. It's a pretty big building, six stories tall and about 100 yards wide. There is a large set of woods located behind the apartment building that stretches on for a good couple of miles. But I've never been back there in real life because the woods give me the creeps. 
I live on the third floor and the window in my bedroom has a full view of the woods behind the building. My dream always starts out the same. I'm standing behind the apartment building, looking into the wall of trees that sits before me. It's in the middle of the night and the moon is shining overhead, casting a low, white light over everything. I'm standing out in the cold with nothing on but a t-shirt and my underwear. I know I'm dreaming, but there is an astounding amount of detail in what I can remember. I remember feeling the cold grass beneath my uncovered feet, and the rhythmic sound of crickets as they sing in the night. I also remember the woods. Every time my dream starts, I'm looking into the woods, but I have this feeling, call it intuition, that I'm waiting for something. For what? I don't know. Despite all the light that's coming down from the soft glow of the moon, the trees in front of me are dark. They vanish into blackness as they get further and further away from me. After a couple of minutes of standing there in the cold looking for nothing, I turn around and start walking toward the apartment building. I go up to my room and walk in. The lights are off, but I can navigate through the darkness using the small amounts of moonlight shining through the windows. The door to my bedroom is always cracked open a little bit. So, I quietly walk in and there I am. Another me, fast asleep in my bed. I watch myself sleep for a couple minutes and then wake up. Despite the dream not appearing scary in any way, I always wake up full of fear and have to calm myself down by drinking a cold cup of water to steady my nerves. Every time I've woken up so far, I've never dared to look out the window. I'm too afraid that I might see something. See what? I don't know. 13 days now, I've had the exact same dream, 13 days in a row. I'd start out behind the building, shivering in the cold of the night. I watch the woods for a couple of minutes, then walk back into my apartment. I enter my bedroom and watch myself sleep for a little bit. Then I wake up. It's gone on like that for almost two weeks. Until last night. It started out the same as every other dream. I was behind the building in the glow of the moonlight, shivering from the cold, standing in front of the dark wall of trees, looking for nothing and listening to the crickets sing. Something was different though, something inside me had changed. There was an indescribable, overwhelming sense of dread that was not there before. I was afraid, impossibly afraid. I shivered again, not from the cold, but from fear. For the past 13 days, I had this very strong feeling, call it intuition, that I was standing in front of those woods for a reason. Some part of me was always saying that I was there waiting for something. Standing there last night, I can say with certainty that whatever was waiting for me had arrived. The atmosphere around me felt different. The sort of feeling you get when you know you're not alone. I wanted to turn around and run, but my body wasn't letting me. Out of nowhere, the crickets stopped singing and everything went silent. I could hear leaves crunching in the distance. I tried to run, but I didn't budge. The crunching leaves grew louder, closer. I opened my mouth to scream, but nothing came out. I heard a twig snap several yards in front of me, and I saw something advance from the darkness. I turned around and started walking towards my apartment. I wanted to run, but I couldn't. My body wasn't allowing me. I could still hear the crunching leaves behind me impossibly close. I knew if that I turned around I would see it, the thing that I had been waiting for. As I was walking back to the apartment, I was certain that something was walking in the darkness behind me, something dangerous and demonic. I made it into the building and walked in, closing the door behind me without turning around. Whatever was following me did not make it into the building. I was about to let out a heavy sigh of relief, but stopped. I heard something behind me. It was very faint, but in the stillness of the night, I could hear it as clear as day. I turned around reluctantly, and looked at the door to the outside. There was a long small window on the door, and through the door, I could see the silhouette of a dark figure standing from just outside the door. The sound that I heard was its claw-like fingers tapping on the glass. It was a mocking gesture. If it wasn't for the lack of light, I would probably seen it smiling at me as well quietly saying that it was going to get me and there was nothing that I could do about it. The tapping stopped and it moved away from the window into the darkness. I turned back around and went up to the third floor where my apartment was. I entered and walked over to my bedroom door. I quietly walked in and froze. My other self wasn't in the bed this time. 
I was standing in front of the bedroom window, looking down at the woods below. My other self turned around, looking at me. I don't know if it was because of the lack of light in the room, but I couldn't make out any facial features. My face was just one pale blur of color with two specks of blackness for eyes. My other self went back to looking out the window. I slowly walked over to him and looked out the window myself. There was something right on the edge of the tree line looking up at us. It looked like a shadow, a dark outline standing in front of the wall of trees. It turned around and walked into the woods. My other self whispered something to me. It was so quiet, it was like I thought it rather than heard it. Get out. Then I woke up. It was 4 o'clock in the morning and the sun wasn't out yet. I sat up in my bed, my heart still pounding uncontrollably. I looked towards the window but didn't get up. What was I so scared about? I had a stupid nightmare. I've never believed in the supernatural, why the hell would I start now? I was starting to get angry with myself for being scared by a dream. I got up and went over to the window out of spite rather than curiosity. I wanted to show myself how stupid I was being. I looked down and scanned the tree line. There was nothing. I scolded myself for acting so childish and was about to look away when I caught something out of the corner of my eye. It was quick but I thought I saw something retreat back into the woods near the trunk of one of the trees. My heart was pounding again and I felt lightheaded. I went into the kitchen and turned on the light before pouring myself a cup of water. I sat there in the light until the sun came up. I called in sick to work and decided that I was going to go apartment hunting instead. As I was leaving the building, something caught my eye. I went back to the front door and stared at the small, long window. I put my hand on the glass and moved it back and forth. There were small scratches etched into the glass. I didn't want to sleep in my apartment tonight, so I got a hotel room instead. I still don't want to fall asleep. Whatever is happening, real or not. I'm scared. I don't know what to do besides wait. Wait for what? I don't know. I know this sounds totally crazy, and I probably wouldn't believe it if it didn't happen to me. I've never been a believer in the paranormal, but honestly, I have no idea what to make of what happened last night. I will say it again before you read this that it sounds insane, but please know I am telling the truth. I wasn't drunk or high, and I was with a friend of mine who saw the exact same thing. I go to college in a smallish school in Wisconsin. One thing this school is known for is having crazy parties out in the surrounding woods. I know it sounds stupid, but it's the only way to make sure that Campus PD doesn't come and shut it down. I haven't ever been to one of these parties. I've had difficulty with anxiety. But after two years of therapy and medication, I finally decided I wanted to go to at least one party before I graduate. I'm a senior. So anyway, I talk to my friend Gina, who's known as a bit of a party girl, and she tells me there's going to be a big party in the woods this Thursday. A lot of kids at my school don't have class on Friday, so we make plans to go. So last night, me and her head down a trail into the woods with flashlights and we joke about how creepy it was. Everything was going smoothly at first until we go down a smaller trail that was only two feet wide instead of the normal road sized trails that we usually go through. I was kind of freaked out but didn't say anything because I assumed she knew where we were going. So we follow this trail a bit longer and eventually come to this sort of clearing where the trees aren't too dense and we could see a towel and a few bottles on the ground. At this point, my friend tells me that she's got a bit turned around, but knows that we're very close to the party because she's been at the clearing before and she starts calling out, hey, hoping someone would hear her and shout back. When this doesn't work, she takes out her phone and calls one of her friends that she said was going to meet her at the party. The friend answers and apparently tells her where they were. Gina then tells me she knows where they are and that we're close. I joke that she better not get me killed, and as we nervously laugh, we hear a nyah, nyah, nyah sound coming from behind us, followed by what sounded like a cross between a whistle of an old train and somebody blowing. We then turn around thinking, what the fuck was that? We shine our flashlights on a deer standing up on its hind legs with one arm against a tree looking at us. 
I know it sounds stupid, but just the way that it was watching us and standing up there was the most unsettling thing I have ever seen in my life. My friend takes off running and I'm still standing there looking at it, trying to make heads or tails of it before I start running after Gina, trying not to be left alone with this thing. Luckily for me, Gina runs into a tree and I catch up with her and start yelling at her about leaving me alone when we hear another whistling sound out to the left of us and turn our flashlights to see another deer looking at us. But this one was walking toward us on its hind legs, but not like a person, like a dog. It gets close but walks behind the tree with only its head and neck poking out, watching us. I've never been so scared in my life and start to cry and yell at Gina, telling her to call the cops, like that would do any good. At this point, I honestly thought I was going to die. I was just so scared that we had heard another whistle sound somewhere in the woods behind us. We heard a rustling sound in the woods and we were sure that this was it. This is where we were going to die, but instead walked out a giant. I mean giant. Like newfound size, but with short hair like a lab. Black dog. The dog then walked right up to us, looked at us for a bit, and looked at the deer behind the tree, which then started to make a nyah, nyah, sound like we had heard earlier, but the dog just stood there looking at it, not growling or barking or anything, just staring. The deer then started to make a huge coughing sound, but the dog stared at it without making a noise before turning around and just ignoring it and walking over to us and started barking and baying. A minute later, a professor who had I taken a class with sophomore year burst through the brush and started yelling at Baron, his dog who had apparently run away into the woods. He was really confused to see us, but saw that we were crying and offered to take us back to his house and drove us back to campus. I haven't slept since that night, and I've been all over the internet trying to make sense of what I saw, and I think it was a skinwalker.